you know, when, when the coaching changes are made, like you and Lincoln uh, were, were together a number of times, and you guys used social media to show that, but it seemed like it gave you guys a, a boost just because of how you approached it and how you went about it. Did you get the feeling maybe it did, uh, especially Lincoln and you kind of being a new duo out there, kind of? Well, I think that, um, you know, basically we were just having fun. You know, I mean, this this recruiting is taking it to a whole new level. Um, you know, especially I've been doing it for 20 years now, and it's changed so much just the last, I would say, about the last five or six. So um, it, it is, it's nonstop. It's every day. Uh, just because we've signed this class, um, you know, we've been on the phone with six juniors today that we've offered. Um, so, I mean, you got to relax and got to have some fun and enjoy it. And we were put in some situations, and we're at some situations that were a little bit different, a little unique, and um, just thought we'd let everybody know what we were doing. Has it been enjoyable at all for you? I mean, the way that you and, and the rest of the staff really reach out on social media, you get, I know you, you don't care for advice on, you know, coaching or anything, but to see people get excited about where you're going, recruiting, when the booms come out, all that stuff? I think there's some some pluses and minuses. Um, you know, it's obvious that it's 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 taken off and it is what it is. Um, and, um, you know, but it's the way we all communicate. You know, it's the way everything goes on. It's how you communicate with everybody since you're limited on your phone calls and your text messages. I um, mean, you can talk all day through social, social media. Um, so... <clears throat> I mean, you, you have to be up on it, and you have to continue to, to keep doing it every single day. Okay, would you talk about managing, especially when you're two coaches down, you, you put Courtney out on the road. Can you talk about the prop, just managing that and how you feel like all that went? Well, um, you know, anytime you're down coaches, you can substitute with a graduate assistant. And, and uh, Courtney is, uh, you know, those guys are just as big a recruiters as we are. Um, they can communicate with them. They can visit with them while they're here. Um, a lot of times those those coaches, those GAs are younger, so probably uh, sometimes maybe relate maybe a little bit better at times to some of them, uh, maybe build a little bit closer relationships at times. Um, and he did a tremendous job. Corey Cowns did a tremendous job uh, for us. Um, but it was, um, you know, it was a little bit difficult because, again, you know, we were down a couple coaches on our side, so, uh, you know, we were really having to run around um, and uh, cover a lot of ground and, and space that, that Lincoln and I did in a couple of weeks. Kale, you were able to flip a couple guys late. How difficult is that process, especially as, as signing day gets closer? And one, protecting your guys and making sure the guys you've got committed stick and feeling out other guys that you might be able to pull in to bolster your class. Well, you know, I think it's important that you have relationships with those players uh, throughout the course of their career in high school. Just because you don't offer them, you never know if you're not going to offer them until the last day. Um, you know, for example, I had a receiver at uh, Bishop Dunn and A.D. Miller that I've known for three years. Um, wonderful kid, great family, um, really good player. Um, we went into it last year, just wasn't quite uh, decided on if we were going in that direction of the type of uh, player uh, at his position, and obviously that changed. So the relationship that we had and I had with AD helped towards the end. Um, you know, I think on the other one uh, with Dahu, um, you know, obviously it helped being close to home, but it helped bringing in uh, new offense coordinator Lincoln Riley. Um, and it was, it, was, it was very noticeable going around to schools and talking to coaches and to players um, about what Lincoln Riley has done in East Carolina and the type of system that he's going to bring in. Um, I mean, it definitely broke. I mean, it, it, it broke ground running, and um, there were a lot of people that, that it turned their heads up and they were excited about it. Last year at this time, coming off the momentum of the Sugar Bowl, now this year, lose the final two, final two games of the season. We asked Coach Stoops to, was this last month any more difficult than, than normal because of the way the season went? I don't know. I think it's always tough. Um, I don't think it's ever easy. Uh, even with guys that you've had committed for four months, six months, eight months, a year, you still lay in bed last night and wonder, you know, are they still going to do it tomorrow morning? Uh, so it's, um, again, I think I mentioned it earlier, it's, this recruiting is a different deal now. And um, 
Um, some cases are a little bit easier than others, you know, depending on young man's background, uh, maybe who he surrounds himself, whether coaches or family members or parents. That definitely helps out some of the situations, but it's, you know, again, it's, it's not anything that you can take for granted. What's early on a signing day like for you? Is it nerves, excitement as you, you know, wait for these guys to make their decisions official, get a chance to flip some guys, things like that? Uh, last night, I couldn't hardly sleep. Um, you know, I've been sleeping pretty good lately, uh, probably just because I'm a little exhausted and tired like everybody else, but I couldn't sleep last night. You know, And I woke up several times at 3 and 4 and 5, and uh, I was going in, going in and checking my phone, seeing if somebody tweeted something or somebody sent me a message or made a decision. Um, so um, a little bit of everything, and then off, uh, you know, obviously excited uh, with the class that we're bringing in. And... Um, you know, but again, there's always you know there's always three, four, five, six players that are out there that come down to the wire that that uh, you know maybe you guys don't know about that we're still recruiting, or maybe some guys are still talking to somebody else and they're committed. Um, so I would say a little bit of both. You ever had a you ever had a year where you weren't excited with your class, Kale? No, of course not. I love all of our players. <laughs> they're going to be all Americans and first round draft picks. Uh, so. You know, we're, it's, it's, um, I, you know, I've been here 16 years and I've told some people that, um, you know, it, it was tough, obviously, how the season ended. And typically that time of year, um, you know, you want to get away and, um, you know, you kind of want to have some time off. Everybody was, you know, just so hungry and ready to get back and go to work. I mean, I, I've never seen it like that in 16 years here. Um, you know, from the players and the coaches and uh, just, you know, just ready to start practicing. And, and obviously with the class that you're bringing in, you're bringing in a new group of guys. So, um, you know, how quickly are they going to be able to jail? How are they going to be, be able to handle it emotionally, uh, mentally? Uh, most of them nowadays are pretty much close to physically ready, especially the skill players. Uh, the bigger guys sometimes have to come in and maybe, you know, get a little bit stronger. But uh, you know, it's just how many of those guys are going to be to help you, in, you know, come come two days and come August for the next season. Which does it help when recruits can see guys like Samadji P. Ryan, Stephen Parker come in and contribute right away as true freshmen? Does that help the recruiting process? Yeah, but you know, that's always one of the biggest questions. You know, am I going to play as a freshman? And of course, my answer is that's up to you. You know, and I mean, it's. Uh, we've played true freshmen around here. We've played walk-ons around here. We've given walk-on scholarships around here. So um, I don't think Coach Stoops would have stayed here for 16 years if he hasn't done things right. Um, you know, our job is to play the very best players. And, um, you know, I think our guys know that. Even guys that's been around here for a year, two years, and guys that have been starters. I mean, they know every single day if they're not going out there to perform, mm -hmm. somebody else is going to beat them out. Kale, has it changed in the last... 10 years or so with just the way kids are developing um, with the number of kids that show up ready to play immediately? Because it seems like you're, you guys may be doing less red shirting than you want to do. I, I think so uh, with the skill players uh, because of all the, the seven on seven and the passing and that they have nowadays. I mean, there's more of those players that are out there. And, um, and that's why I think that has a lot to do with, especially in this part of the country, that's why teams are getting better because this part of the country teams are spread and they're throwing the ball around. Well, you know, there's, you know, these young kids are doing this in sixth, seventh, eighth grade. They're doing it all summer long. You know, I mean, it's not something where you play football for four months. I mean, they're doing this nine months out of the year. So that's why I think there's more players they are better developed, like you said, and I think that's why, um, you know, more, there's more teams out there that are get, be able to get good players. Got your phone up there and it keeps buzzing. Are you still waiting on some news? Well, you just never know. <laughs> you know, I'm waiting on it. Typically, I get a, you know, some text about this time from my brother. You know, making some smart comment. You know, uh, but you, you just never know. You never know what's going to happen. Again, we've talked to, you know, like I said, a bunch of juniors today, and um, you know, guys that we know that are great players, and we've offered, and um, you know, hoping that some of them can go ahead and make a decision today, even though it's 365 days away. Do you ever send Mike a smart comment? I don't waste my time. I got, <laughs> I got more important things to do. And when you, you have a situation like Prince McKinney, you kind of sneaking a guy in late on a visit, on a visit and trying to flip him. You, do you have to wait till that's over to enjoy it, or are you just nervous the entire time that's going on? He's the same as any any of them that are committed for a year. You know, you still, you still, 
until they sign, you just still don't, there's still always that little doubt uh, be, because in our profession, I mean, there's a lot of good recruiters out there. There's a lot of great recruiters out there. And, um, um, you know, you don't even have to be in a top five, top 10, top 20 program. And there's great recruiters all over the place and and um they have access to them just like just like you do you know so you can't you know if we did not have the the social media and um then that would eliminate some of that but they have ways to get in touch with them just like we do so you just you just never know okay a lot of times or a few times you've had to go into a spring thinking what am i going to do at tailback this year it seems like you're problem is what am I going to do with all my tailbacks? You got three established guys. You got Mixon apparently coming back. And signed to sounds like a good player. What, what are you going to do with all your tailbacks? Just play the very best ones. Um, play them on all special teams. They will be on all four special teams. They'll run down and cover kicks. They'll be on the front line of kickoff returns. Some of them return kicks. Some of them might be punt returners. Some might be on the front line of punt return uh, team. Um, you know, play two tailbacks at a time. Uh, there's some guys in this class that are that are every bit as capable of going out and playing in the slot and running routes down the field. Uh, so, um, you know, they know that ahead of time. I tell all of them that. They know when they come here that there's going to be good players. I, you know, my job is to go out. Every time when I go out and recruit, I tell them, my job is to go out and try to find somebody that's better than you. I'm trying to find players that come in and beat you guys out. So um, that's just kind of how we've done it around here, how I've done it. But I think... For the most part, most of them come here for the right reasons. You know, they want to win championships. They want to get a great education. Uh, you know, they want to play under one of the greatest college football coaches of all time and Coach Stoops, uh, have a chance to work with Jerry Smith and his strength staff, who has done a tremendous job of developing and putting players in the NFL, um, and then obviously have a chance to work under me, and hopefully I don't screw them up so much. Kale, with you and, and Lincoln working together so much and recruiting, We've seen the quarterbacks you have on campus in high school. All of them throw the ball really well. I think we didn't really see you chase up, you know, a lot of quarterbacks down. It didn't look like you really made a push to land somebody. It didn't just comp that confident in the guys you have on campus? Well, we're confident in the ones we have, but we also made a push for some. Uh, but, you know, there comes a fine line of that, you know, we're just not going to bring a guy in just to bring a guy in. Um, it, it will be extremely appealing to the top quarterbacks in the country next year that the University of Oklahoma, who's going to throw the ball quite a bit, did not sign a quarterback. Um, that will grab a lot of people's attention, So, um, especially at that position. You know, it's kind of a dominoes deal. Once one guy goes somewhere, then somebody else, and everybody starts hurrying up and picking a spot. So, um, you know, with what Coach Riley's done and his, his background and, and the success, you know, I think his quarterback threw it 617 times last year, which I believe most in college football. Um, I think he's definitely going to have the opportunity to bring in a, a top flight quarterback next year. Kale, with, with Joe coming back and, and working with the team, how has he, how's he looked and, and how, how do you think he's handled sort of this whole, this whole thing? You know, um, you know he, he made a split second wrong decision and he knows that. Uh, he is a super, super kid. I mean, he, and, and I use the term kid because he still is like a kid. Um, he's still very young. Um, but, um, you know, I'm proud of him for what he did. Obviously, um, you know, he was punished and, and, and rightfully so for whatever, you know, President Bourne and, and uh, University of Oklahoma decided to do. Um, and he had to, there was things that he had to do um, that, uh, you know, kept him away from our, you know, pretty much our football team and our locker room and our weight room. And it was hard on him. You know, I, I just, it's, it's, uh, it's a tough deal, but he did. He did a tremendous job. He did very well in school. Um, you know, he was uh, working out on his own and um, staying up on that. And um, I was, um, you know, I, he's, he's been like a caged tiger, I can tell you that. And I know this, whenever we, we, we cut that uh, lock off that cage, my man came out running. And so he is, uh, he is a good player. He is extremely talented. Um, he is in the process of kind of getting back into the uh, form that Jerry Schmidt wants him to be in. Uh, he's still extremely impressive, but it takes while it takes a while for guys to kind of get back into the shape that you know that most guys are used to around here. Did you have much contact with him last fall, Kale? All the time. What kind of stuff did you got just to make sure he was sort of engaged still? Since I he mean, wasn't just in? everyday life. I mean, I love the kid. I, I, 
you know, obviously signed him and told his mom and dad that I'd take care of him, and that was my job. You know, it's my job for everybody I bring in here that I sign that plays underneath me. It's just not on the football field. It's, it's going to class. It's doing the right things, making sure you're around the right people. Um, and then, you know, just, you know, making sure that he, that he knew that, that um, you know, he was still, if he did things right, he was still going to be given a great opportunity around here. Did you always think that he'd, he'd stay, or were you worried that he'd go somewhere else? I thought he'd stay, but again, it's like recruiting. You always worry a little bit. Um, but um, I, think, I think the relationship that he and I had um, and um, you know how much he just fell in love with the University of Oklahoma, and he knew that all of his goals and dreams are still here that he wants to achieve, and um, you know, why do I need to go somewhere else and do something else? So um, <clears throat> I think it's – I think, um, you know, It'll it'll be fun to have him back out there running around. Um, you know, I know the players have, were excited that he's been back in the full swing of things. Any chance of moving one of your tailbacks to another position? Not that I know of. I don't I don't plan on it. Nobody's come to me and has said any of that.